Hello, once again, welcome on my scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences. Excuse me, I have to pull my microphone a little bit closer to my mouth. Okay, I think it is uh, the quality of voice recording is okay now. So, uh, I am placing online another update on my scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences. And uh, once again, for those viewers uh, who are not familiar with my blog, uh, once again, the way those videos on YouTube are being coupled with written updates on the website of my blog. So, in the description box below the video, you can find a link, discoversocialsciences.com, such as it is spelled under, under, under me in the video window. Uh, you click on that link, it takes you to the website of my blog, discoversocialsciences.com, and there you will find a written update which is coupled with this video so that update on the website of my blog has the same title as this video as the title that you can find under this video so after that introduction which is sort of ritual now for me i go into the subject matter of this update uh, so here is the thing i am developing a thread of research on the civilizational role of cities and I am working around like a big hypothesis namely that cities are cradles for new social roles so as our population grows uh, and in order to maintain reasonable social cohesion we need new social roles for new people who come to social life and uh, uh, my hypothesis is that cities as uh, social contrivances precisely are a sort of demographic anomaly that serves to generate those new social roles. And I wanted to understand better that uh, mechanism of uh, emergence of new social roles. So I built a simple neural network uh, a multi-layer perceptron, if I remember well, it has four layers. And uh, I used it to simulate, to like for formulate complex, inform the hypothesis about uh, how those social roles can emerge and how they can disappear uh, in a social structure. Uh, my general take on that experiment is the following. It can be useful for you, my readers and my viewers, if you are using neural networks and artificial intelligence in general to study social sciences. Uh, my uh, method, my general method of using neural networks for social research is that first I build a sort of a baseline neural network like a baseline artificial intelligence which is supposed to be kind of neutral in its ways this time i built a neural network which is almost perfectly reactive on the short run but completely dumb on the long run so it reacts immediately to any stimulation that it receives it reacts immediately to any error it makes but it doesn't reduce that error on the long run. The long run this time uh, in this specific experiment means 3000 experimental rounds run in that, in that uh, neural network. So I built that baseline neural network to represent uh, like a perfectly short termist social change, perfectly reactive without any long term learning. And then into that mathematical structure, I introduce first of all an exogenous uh, disturbance. A disturbance means uh, simply a column, a variable in the database, which uh, by default in the baseline version of the neural network is zero. So all the values in that specific column, in that specific variable are zero. And when I want a social disturbance to appear, like a rapid technological change, like a pandemic, which is very, very much a topic of importance now, then I simply uh, drop a handful of 
randomly generated numbers into that specific variable and it works like a randomly appearing uh, disturbing factor that comes from outside to that social structure. And inside the social structure, I study four basic scenarios. My scenario A, uh, which you, you will find in the written version of that updated scenario A, is uh, the one which, uh, uh, under the influence of that disturbance factor, the cohesion, the social cohesion between social roles disappears. Huh? In mathematical terms, it means that the neural network stops observing its own internal coherence. Scenario, uh, scenario B, uh, on the other hand, is uh, based on the hypothesis that a uh, factor of disturbance coming from outside can suppress some social roles, can, some, uh, can just wipe out some professions, uh, some social structures. Scenarios C and D are built differently. They are built around the hypothesis that uh, an external disturbance can trigger into existence new social roles, like new jobs, new, new types of businesses, new technologies. And I uh, study that triggering into existence under two angles. Scenario C, so the, the, the third of my alternative scenarios, assumes that those new emerging social roles are not really coherent with the incumbent, already existing social roles. Uh, so they just develop, they just grow, but they are not completely connected to, to the existing social roles. And scenario D, so the fourth scenario, uh, is essentially C with social cohesion. So I assume that under the influence of an external stressor, new social roles form, but from the very beginning, as they form, they, they are coherent, so they keep some kind of functional link with the existing social roles. So it is a situation when, for example, every new type of profession which appears in the social system immediately sort of tries to fit into the social structure, which is sometimes true, but sometimes not. Huh? Uh, so essentially all that experiment is based on a big theory, which I very much follow in my research. It is the so-called swarm theory. It is a theory where social systems are studied as swarms. Huh? Swarms are similar to, to swarms of bees, swarms of hornets, swarms of ants and, and so on. Uh, so, the, a quick out outline of the findings that I have with that, um, uh, with that experiment based on a neural network. First of all, uh, there are like two main, uh, like uh, two most surprising observations. The more general one is that it is not really possible or it is not really that easy to suppress social roles in a social structure. When I use that neural network to simulate the phenomenon of suppression in social roles, they always kick back into existence. Hmm? Uh, so there is a mathematical uh, structure which is supposed to eliminate social roles from the database, but they kick back into existence as I run the network through those 3,000 experimental rounds. And that's interesting. Huh? And the second thing is that even if I don't uh, explicitly or, or, or don't purposefully uh, include in that neural network mechanisms that are supposed to suppress social roles, that suppression on the short run, so like a temporary suppression of, of social roles can take place when I loosen up uh, social cohesion. So in the baseline version of my neural network, in that, let's say, neutral one, there is an equation which serves to like feed forward into each consecutive experimental round uh, Euclidean distances between variables from the previous experimental round. Huh? 
So it is as if the network was observing its own internal cohesion, its own like uh, internal uh, consistency. When I switch that specific equation off, so when I desactivate it in the network, social roles tend to disappear for a moment, like for a short time, in the beginning of the experimentation, roughly speaking, over the whole span of 3000 experimental rounds, when I switch off that internal cohesion, the first 1000 of experimental rounds displays that surprising pattern when from time to time, let's say in experimental round 400, in experimental round 600 and so on, never the same, uh, social roles tend to disappear from the uh, network which is visible as the probability of their happening going suddenly down to zero. But then they kick back into an existence and after or past 1000 experimental rounds, so down the road with the, uh, with the remaining 2000 experimental rounds, there is no more disappearance in social roles. There is no more like uh, no more disturbance. The system like learns. Huh? Uh, so this is in interesting for making hypotheses as for the role of cities. Huh? I have very much that intuition as for technological change in general. Uh, that we should study technological change rather as a superimposition of many technologies. Uh, rather than uh, like a, uh, 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 like a replacement of an older uh, generation of technology with a newer one. Hmm. So what I think is intuitively true for technologies here in my experiment turns out to be true for social roles. Uh, that new social roles as for, as for example technology changes tend to coexist with the older ones rather than uh, rather than supplanting them completely hmm? uh, it is by the way a hypothesis which was uh, formulated already long ago mm, if i remember well uh, joseph campbell uh, that writer and social thinker who is famous for his uh, theory of the hero and his theory of uh, of mythology he claimed that uh, all the social roles that we have in the today's society are essentially built on the foundation of social roles that we humans uh, we formed when we were hunters gatherers huh? so it is all based on what we, on how we used to divide our tasks and how we used to form our skills uh, when our basic way of subsistence was hunting and gathering Okay, so that's my video introduction to that update. You will find much more, uh, in, in, including the exact mathematical structure of that artificial intelligence I used. You will find much more in the written version of that update. So, once again, you go into the description box below the video. You find the link discoversocialsciences.com. You click on the link, which takes you to the website of my blog discover social sciences and there on that website you will find a written update which has the same title as this video and there you find much more than i have just uh, described so have fun with science have a nice day and a nice week because we are monday bye